Want to avoid money regrets and costly financial errors? Eager to learn common pitfalls that trip up even seasoned investors? Well, today we'll be covering part two of our discussion on foolish financial mistakes to steer clear of that can cost you dearly. Let's get some perspective. Welcome to another episode of Christian Financial Perspectives. My name is Sean Peters. I'm joined as always by my father-in-law, Bob Barber. And today we're going to be going into part two of our foolish financial mistakes to avoid. We covered a few scriptures on the last episode. If you haven't already taken a look at that, I would definitely recommend you stop now, click the link in the description, uh, go back and watch that. But we're going to start with the scriptures, and then we'll kind of get into this this next section. So Proverbs 28, 26, those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. Amen. James 1, 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Mm. And Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. As we alluded to a little earlier, last week we did cover part one of this Foolish Financial Mistakes series, if you will, that these mistakes, they could cost you thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you didn't see it, again, pause now, click the link in the description, go check that out. Today in part two, we're going to be continuing that. Bob put this together from, what is it, over 30 years at this point of, of experience? And so I've seen them just, I've seen them over and over. It's yeah. the same mistakes yeah. over and over and over. And that was really interesting when I put this together, how, gosh, it only took me about 15, 20 minutes. And then I, you know, yeah. work, worked on it from there. But these were coming into my mind as fast as yeah. I could write them down. Yeah. Bottom line. And yeah. there's a lot of crossover. So obviously part of that too was kind of bringing that down to a, a total of, of 20. So we didn't have too oh, it, much. It was actually more much than repeat. 20. Yes, and, I know. And, and yeah. That, yeah. And that's why we did this in a two part series because there's so much to take in. Yeah. So this, this is not to hurt anyone. This is to help you. This yeah. is to say, don't do these. And, and all of us have been guilty of these mistakes. Mm-hmm. And that's way that's the way you learn. Yep, probably gives you gray hair. That's why I got a lot of it. So hopefully these don't insult you in any way, but they are helpful and beneficial. That's why we like that Jeremiah, yeah, scripture. So without further ado, let's get on to number eleven of the twenty mm-hmm. that we'll be discussing today. Which number eleven? Blaming someone else for your financial mistakes, pointing at someone. Well, you yeah, well, Sean, if I point at you, what? Oh I, yeah. <laughs> okay, if I point at you, I got one finger pointing at you. How many I got pointing back at me? Well, that's right, you got three. I, I got three pointing back at me. And I, I've seen this. I've seen people blame like an older an older generation. Mm-hmm. You're the reason I'm, I'm making all these financial mistakes. Yeah. You're the problem behind mm-hmm. my financial problems. And um, I, you can't do that. You've yeah. got you've got to own up to it, that's and right. you've got to take responsibility. That's right. And you know we have such good tools today, like Financial Peace University by Dave. Wonderful Ramsey. program. Yep. Uh, we, we've got Crown Ministries mm-hmm. um, that you can go to. There's there's a lot of good information out there yeah. to teach yourself, including our program. You know, if yeah. you listen to this every single week, we're we're giving you an education yep. about not making foolish mistakes right. that are that right. will financially mm-hmm. cost you. And we we do that because uh, one of with our our mission and vision as a company, mm-hmm. one of those things is that we want to expand God's kingdom through the influential gate of finance. And right. so we feel that doing programs like this, even when we're talking about something that maybe is a little hard harder to hear, mm-hmm. we want to make sure that we're honoring the Lord and we are trying to help people with sound biblical and financial advice. So, Financial Peace University is great. Crown uh, has a lot of great resources available, including they actually have like one-on-one mentoring yeah. that is is really useful if, you know, you're someone who's in debt or maybe you just got out of it, but you're just, you're trying to get some basics together. They have a really good program for that as, they a, do. as a nonprofit. They so, really do. Yeah. All right. Well, no, number 12, investing all your money in one asset class, like say only residential real estate or, or tech, tech yeah. energy stocks. Mm-hmm. Or even just cash. Yep. So I like I like you, your you like what going I have broke cash safely because of inflation and loss of purchasing power. Yeah, I have seen. I'm not going to invest in anything. It's just going to be all in cash. Yeah. Well, you're investing. 
In cash. In cash. Right. Yeah. And then you lose money because of inflation. Yep. So. Number 13 is allowing others, like the internet, email, TV ads, to manipulate you Mm -hmm. into making long-term bad financial decisions, like buying gold. Yeah, that's the most common. And I know just recently, uh, you know, we, we had a program. On that, on that's the, right. Because they're they're out there and they want yeah. to manipulate you, and they want to manipulate you because they're making some very high commissions. Yeah, that's right. On yeah, selling you, know, you it, a it, certain product, there there are better and worse, obviously, places and, and companies you can buy precious metals through. But from what I'd seen of the averages, it's anywhere from what three to ten percent for like a, a decent company. Mm-hmm. So, so whatever you're buying, you're, you're paying that commission either on top of, or as part of your total, like what you actually get back. Some of the companies are at 30 and 50%, just very predatory. When you told me that and you were doing that yeah. um, research, I was like, you gotta yeah. be kidding me. And then here's, here's the catch. Even if it is one of the better companies where it's the three to 10% range, what that also means then is when you want to sell it back, you're going to be paying a transaction cost again. Mm-hmm. So whatever that percentage is, when you initially buy it and when you sell it, obviously that goes back into it. Yeah. And so, you know, if you just look at precious metals and see what was the price at this time to this time, you got to make sure you take into account all those additional transaction costs. Yeah, correct. So And, and it, taxes, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So overall, long story short, finally we talked about it before, but for precious metals, it's – it's not that you can't ever make money on it, but it's typically a shorter term possible option because in the in the longer term it, it doesn't do very well. Yeah. Com- compared to an actual diversified portfolio. So number, number 14. fourteen. Number fourteen is procrastination. Boy, this is a mistake I see a lot of people make. They they're trying to wait for that convenient time to come to start saving, start putting money aside, pay off that debt. Let me tell you, it's never gonna come. That's the right. convenient time is never going to come, nope. and you just have to start doing it now. So don't think by waiting you're you're getting any farther. Along. The the best time to start that saving and investing plan is today, and it might start with just saying I'm not going to drink that six dollar cup of coffee every day. Yep, and I'm going to start saving. You know, that extra $6, I'm going to mm-hmm. drink it at home. And over a month, you know, you're going to now save at least $100, maybe 120 if you yeah. did it all 30 days. <laughs> and, and and then you start putting that aside. Mm-hmm. All right. Number 15, spontaneous mm-hmm. emotional spending without thinking about the long-term consequences. Boy, Sean, with the apps today. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. On our, on our, our smartphones, oh, oh. you enter in your credit card information once and... Mm-hmm. There it is, and you can just pop, 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 and it's yeah. just so easy now yeah. to buy. I see in my neighborhood. I, I think I think Amazon and and UPS just kind of you know they just hang out in the neighborhood. <laughs> I mean, and they probably hang out in your neighborhood too. You probably see them every day. You, you hear those trucks. You know, you, you know <laughs> those kinds of services, Bob. They're they're such a great example of how a ingenuity and technological advancement and, mm-hmm. and improvements in processes, how, how they can be such a great thing. But if you're not careful, they can also have that other edge of the sword and, and be a, a really negative with people who don't practice diligent spending and purchases that because it's so easy, you can very quickly overspend. Little small purchases can add up very quickly. That's right. 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 All right. Which goes into number 16. Number 16, it does go right into it. You know, you you, you know how I feel about this. Yep. Using a credit card for everyday purchases instead of a debit card. Mm -hmm. I am a big believe. I I do not believe in using the credit card. Even if you say, I'm paying it off every day. Um, Credit card companies, they're they're not going to stop you and they're not motivated to keep you inside a budget. That's right. Okay. That's right. They're actually motivated the other way to enslave you. So that you owe money to them and they can charge. I mean, the interest rates today are like twenty percent plus or, or more, depending it, it, on it's you know it's it's just absolutely insane. Uh, I was just talking with a, a Christian brother yesterday, and he was talking about. It. He says, "Yeah, we pay it off every month." He goes, "But then there's always these extra little things that I see in there." I'm like, "Where'd this come from? Where'd this mm-hmm. come from?" If you use a debit card, there's no way you can overspend. I'm coming up with and a program. And if you do, you'll get penalized. I'm coming up with a program, zero. <laughs> and I'm just going to give you a little, a little, uh, you know, for the future, so you'll know. It's called budgeting simplified, and I'm going to explain to you how you you get paid into one account, 
And then you have a second account that you use for your expenses, mm. and you only put a certain amount over there each week. Yeah. For those of you who don't like budgeting, with well, today, you know, with your bank app, yeah. you can go online and you can see this is what I have in the in, mm. in the balance. And you, so you, automatically, you only spend what you actually allocated. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. You just cannot go over where a credit card. They're they're not yeah. going to call you and say, "Hey, by the way, you went over." <laughs> oh, it's 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 the opposite. Jen and I have had a have a had a card for a long time, and we get contacted somewhat regularly, letting us know. By the way, did you know that we could increase your credit limit? Oh yeah, r- like, right. We don't need to. We yeah, don't we, ever we, even we don't come close to, to using it. We now. don't want Why would to I, increase it. That's just asking for trouble. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, boy, this is an advertisement I see every single day mm-hmm. um, on TV. It just. I, I just do not like it, yeah. okay, at number, all. Number 17, yeah. buying insurance based only on price, not adequate coverage. Only buy what you need. That is the most ignorant quote in yeah. advertising I have heard. Only buy what you need. You know, when you get in an accident, are you going to be happy that you bought as little as possible? Because yeah. that's what they mean. That's right. And I've never met anybody that's been in an accident that – Bought through one of these companies, the minimal amount of coverage, mm-hmm. and I mean, you can get the minimal can get way, way yeah, down, that's right. That's right. way down there. So, really, what it comes down to is when it's when insurance is being promoted as buy the minimum mm-hmm. or buy only what you absolutely need. Yeah, the issue with that is you're kind of it's kind of forgetting the primary purpose of insurance in the first place, which right. is risk mitigation. Mm-hmm. You're trying to cover a risk that you may not be able to cover out of pocket with cash investments or otherwise. Yeah. So you've got to look at not just what is the cheapest, but like like we said, adequate. You, you need to make sure that you've adequately covered the risk that that situation is causing, depending on what kind of insurance it is, and buy accordingly. We know Ron First of Christian Insurance Services, and he has had people come to him that didn't buy from him in the first place. And um, um, this is not an advertisement for him, but he's told me some of the stories of, of people that have bought strictly based on price and not coverage, and it's it's heartbreaking. It's very heartbreaking. It is one of the most foolish financial mistakes you can make. As a personal positive story though was that ron had helped jenna and i with our auto insurance uh-huh. and when she had gotten rear-ended by somebody totaled the car but also caused further damage like with her back and everything and one of the things that was just a slight increase in price maybe compared to some other options but ron had helped us with the pip the personal injury protection and so it it provided so much more money that without even technically waiting for the claim to be filed we mm-hmm. could basically get help with anything related to medical and other Types of types of expenses, and so just those little things like that. So and it doesn't cost that much more. No, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah. So number eighteen, not having an estate plan with a will or trust, medical and financial power of attorney. Yeah, I have seen families destroyed mm-hmm. by this. Uh, I just got a call last week, Sean. It was heartbreaking. It was it was actually from a mom. That's an older mom, and um, the son's uh, wife passed away, and there was no will at all. And uh, all the bills were being paid out of her account, mm. all of them. Mm. So guess what's happening? There's no money mm-hmm. to pay the bills that need to be paid because everything was going into her account. Yeah. Now he's got to go through probate. Before they can get access to anything. Isn't that mm-hmm. crazy? Yeah. I've watched this probate sometimes go on for eight or nine months. I've seen families fight over inheritances. It's it's just foolish just not to update your estate plan and That's right. it, or did I say update <laughs> hopefully you have one if you yeah. and if you do have one you probably need, need to update it too because they need to be updated every two or three years yeah that's okay. right uh, number 19 not monitoring your bank account balances and spending frequently no one else is looking at this for you yeah so you, you hear you, you gotta hear, look at it you hear well I don't want to have the app because I'm, I'm scared of you know somebody's gonna hack me if you monitor your bank account every day, you'll know if somebody's hacked you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is where I'm, when we get to the program where we're going to talk about bi- budgeting simplified, yeah. this can help so much. And all the banks have apps today. Yeah. yeah. And number 20, the number one mistake by far, yeah. not having a financial plan or blueprint and updating it at least once a year, especially before you make a large withdrawal. 
It's a little bit of a long one, but yeah. by far the most important one. And I say this, and, and, and you've probably heard the statement. I don't know. Maybe you've not heard the statement. It's a statement that it's been around a long time. No one plans to fail. They, they just fail to plan. Mm. Okay. And, and kind of goes into, you know, the, the second biggest financial mistake that we shared last week mm -hmm. is, is that we see people all the time selling appreciated assets to buy depreciating ones like a car. Mm. Yep. And, and that is a very foolish mistake yep. because you think about you take 50,000 out for a car. Now it's not going to grow. It's not going to compound to a hundred, and it's not going to compound the two hundred. And I've yeah. said this so many times. The, long, the longer yeah. you have, you know, like if you just went into retirement, chances are you've got thirty years. Yeah, twenty, thirty years. Yeah. So the longer you have, the more costly taking money out of appreciated assets to buy a depreciated one like a car impacts you. So well, there you go. There's twenty of them. Like again, if you didn't hear last week, we would emphasize you go back and and listen to. Those first 10, we are here to help you with your financial life. That's right. With Christian financial advice. It's fiduciary-based advice as well. Uh, we do not make any commissions here. We don't, we don't sell commission-based products. We're paid by you, no one else. That's right. So give us a call, 830-609-6986. Visit our website at christianfinancialadvisors.com. You can also comment in the video if you're, wa if you're watching the video. But Oh, yeah, and we wanted to mention this. Yeah, it, if – you know someone that might benefit from this content, yeah. either this video or any other video that you watch or whatever it might be, feel free to share it with them. Absolutely. You know, that this is for anybody that wants to watch it. That's why we put it out there publicly. So if anyone might benefit from this that you know, share it with them. Thank and you. That's all. God bless. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like this video. If you have questions, you can visit our website, call, text us, or comment below. See you next time.